Chad Westport here, and I wanted to talk really quickly about reading your plants, listening to what the leaves are saying. Observation is an important part of any grower's toolbox. I've been spending some more time lately on the forums, and one question that comes up time and time again is, what's wrong with my leaf color? So we've all seen healthy green plants before. We can recognize the general color, and we can also tell when our plants are a little bit off. So when they're off, we go searching for answers. For many new growers, the automatic assumption is that they have a nutrient deficiency and they grab their nutrients and put more on. This isn't always the wisest answer and I'll explain why. So first, here is a leaf chart that we've probably all seen. You should be familiar with it. It shows you what the common deficiencies and toxicities of different nutrients look like in cannabis leaves. Now, if you look at it long enough, you'll realize that a lot of these things are similar, can be confusing. So with symptoms looking similar for many nutrients, whether it is a toxicity or a deficiency, it can be confusing what nutrient you are aiming for to correct. You may hear macro and micronutrients, and what this stands for is macronutrients are needed in larger amounts, Micronutrients are needed in smaller amounts. Here's a quick rundown of macro and micronutrients for cannabis, although some debate exists over which should be considered in which category, but here's the list for now. The next thing to know is mobile versus immobile nutrients. This is a key indicator as to what may be going on in the plant. And I will add that there are two types. There's mobility in soil and there's mobility in plants. Nutrients are going to react similar, but not always the same in either scenario. The concern with mobile versus immobile nutrients in the soil comes into play if you're constantly running a drain to waste system that has runoff from the bottom with each watering. Mobile nutrients in the soil over time may be washed out at a different ratio than the immobile so soil nutrients, and this can create an imbalance. Imbalance is the crux of most nutrient issues. Back to the plant though, and how to use mobile versus immobile in plant diagnosis. So let's use nitrogen as an example. Nitrogen is a mobile nutrient meaning that when the top growth isn't getting all of the nitrogen it needs from the soil, it can translocate nitrogen to the upper growth from the lower growth. This is something many growers have seen. As the plant matures, older fan leaves on the bottom yellow out and senesce, aka die. So with immobile nutrients, it will be different. With immobile nutrients, you first see the signs of a problem in the upper new growth. The plant is not able to draw reserves up from the bottom leaves because the nutrient in question is immobile. So what does this all mean and how does it affect you? Well, when you have leaves that don't look right, are they the lower older growth or is it the upper new growth? Mobile versus immobile. Diagnosing your plants this way can help you narrow down the possibilities. One thing that is crucial to know about, though, is that deficiencies or toxicities aren't your only option. Nutrient lockout. It's a real thing, and it could be the reason why when you're adding a specific nutrient to correct a deficiency and it's not working, you might have a lockout. Uh, it can be a complex thing to explain the mechanisms in depth in the time we have right now, but cation exchange is heavily involved here. Some nutrients are antagonistic to others and they block their uptake by the plant, even though there's adequate levels of this nutrient in the soil. This is Mulder's chart, which is a key for which nutrients are antagonistic of others. At the end of the day, whether it's tomatoes or cannabis, nutrients need to be within a particular balance for the soil chemistry and root zone to effectively uptake it. 
An example is when growers enter into the flowering phase. Uh, they believe more phosphorus and potassium are needed, the P and the K. Uh, while this may be true, uh, if you add large amounts of them without compensating the other nutrient levels, you could soon have a soil that is locking out other nutrients like magnesium. The plant will suffer, although your intention was good. Uh, but these, there are other factors too uh, to control that do control or have an effect on the uptake of nutrients and hence your leaf color. Uh, things such as like temperature, watering practices, humidity, direct heavy airflow, pest pressure, etc. So diagnosing a plant from pictures can be a hard thing for people to do on a forum, especially under artificial grow lights. But hopefully now you're better prepared to diagnose your plants by knowing which nutrients are macro and micro, which nutrients are mobile and immobile, and which nutrients are antagonistic of each other. So knowing these things, you are better prepared for a proper diagnosis. Because when things go south and the leaves aren't looking right, you can ask yourself, is it a deficiency, a toxicity, or a lockout? I'm Chad Westport. Find me on Instagram, chad.westport. Hit up the website, chadwestport.com, or keep it locked right here, Chad Westport on YouTube. And thanks for tuning in for another episode of Just One Thing. Party on. Ah. Uh...